When time allows, it's important to create new imagery for your portfolio. I was looking to capture a simple item like a bag of Doritos in a more playful manner. Initially, I had one idea that involved into three different background concepts. I struggled to cho choose just one, so I decided to capture all three and then later select the most appealing option as the final image. To align my concepts and better comprehend the elements necessary to bring the image to life, I use Adobe Fresco to sketch out my ideas. While my sketches may not be exceptionally remarkable despite having attended art school, they serve as a means to convey the basic idea and establish a roadmap for the creation of the image. This is the first image that I sketched. I was going to use a simple grounding surface at the bottom. For this surface, I was going to use a brown felt. For the second background option, I was going to use some fabric to create two lines that converge into the background, which would mimic the chip's shape and add some dimension. For the third option, I was going to create an organic rectangle out of fabric to help frame the Doritos. All right, I start with spray painting. I had cut some shapes out of wood that I want to use. And the reason I start with spray painting because it's going to take the longest to dry. I then move on to the background and I steam the fabric to get rid of any wrinkles. And then I start by cutting the hole for the Doritos bag to go through because this is the center of the shot and I'll build everything around that. So I suspend that first. Then I start bending the heavier wires to hold the triangles in place. I use aluminum wire to hold the triangles so that once I get them in place, I can ultimately move them around as needed once I'm looking through the camera. So I hot glue them on so they're on there uh, really well and sturdy so they don't fall off in the middle of the job it's time to darken the studio so that I can start to think about my lighting as I'm adding the other elements into the shot. I've now started bending the wire and I'm going to glue in the second triangle that I would like to add. I'm sliding in my studio stand which I use instead of a tripod. It gives me a lot more control. The camera that I'm going to use is a Phase 1 IQ4 with a 120mm macro lens. I start by hand holding the key light so that I can move it around and see how it interacts with the product. Once I get a good idea, I put it on the C stand and get it roughly in place. I look in front of the lens to see how the light is hitting it and then I fine tune the softbox as needed. I've run a thinner gauged wire through the background so I can start adding the chips in place. I have three chips that look like they're kind of falling out of the bag. So I've put in some glue on the back of the chips and putting them on the wires, which I can then bend around as needed. I capture an image so that I can see how the third one falls into place. It looks, as I zoom in, you can see that it's a little straight. I want it tilted. So I go back and I can easily bend the chips where I want them because they're on the aluminum rods. Here's what the photo looks like with just the key light on. I'm happy with the placement of the chips and the green triangles on the side and how the bag looks. The next light will be for the bottom of the Dorito bag. I'm setting up a pro photo with a seven inch reflector, which I'm gonna aim at the bottom of the bag. I don't have any diffusion on it to start so that I can see where it hits. The diffusion that I brought in wasn't soft enough, so I'm going to take off the 7 inch reflector that I have and I'm going to put a strip box on instead. The soft box is helping me change the shape of the reflection or highlight on the bottom of the bag. In this case, it's making it thicker. I'm bringing back in the diffusion that I had from before, which will help soften the highlight on the bottom of the bag. This is what it looks like with the bottom softbox added. You can see the highlight on the bottom of the Dorito bag. The sides of the triangles have been lit as well, creating a nice highlight on their corners. Like the sketch that I showed earlier, I'm going to have a rectangle in the background. I'm not quite sure the size that it should be, so I'm going to hang a 
diffusion material that I'll roughly frame around. And once it looks about right, I'm going to use some tape, which I'm going to run across the bottom so that I know how far it'll overlap behind the images and how far it'll be on the left, right, and top. I'm using that tape as my guideline as I hand cut the fabric. The fabric is a lightweight fabric that cuts very easily and doesn't fringe on the edges, which is really nice for this particular use. Once the shape is cut, I'm going to clamp the fabric onto the same frame so that it'll pop right back into place when I put it back into the C-stand. Seeing the fabric in the captured image made me realize it was going to be too problematic to work with this fabric and get rid of a lot of the wrinkles, especially the draping at the bottom. I decided it was better to move on to the other background options that I had sketched. The second background idea was to use the same fabric and place a line on the left and right of the photo that would converge off into the distance. Once I was happy with the placement of the fabric on the background, I would start adding additional lighting to bring some more dimension to the photo. Using a brawn color pico light, I'm going to add a little bit of movement to the top right triangle. The chips that are coming out of the bag are looking a little flat. I just want to add a little bit more dimension to them. So I'm going to add another pico light to the top. The key is not to have that pico light interfere with the other light that I just used on the right triangle. When I capture a test image, I think the chips look much better, a lot more dimension and pop out from the background. The face of the lower left triangle now needs to be lit, so I'll bring another light in for that. As you can see, there's a shadow that is cast from the bag when I bring in that other light. So I'm going to try to fill that in with a light on the right side. I'm going to have to aim it down and up so I don't get an additional shadow from the Doritos bag. Once I'm happy with the placement of the light, I'll bring in the diffusion so that it is not a directional light, but more of a fill light. Just enough to soften up that dark shadow underneath the bag. In the captured image, you can see that the shadow is still there. It's just softer, not as heavy, which is just what I was looking for. I'll consider this a final image for this background option and move on to my third and final background option that I had sketched earlier. I placed the felt on some foam core, which I have clamped onto a small C-stand, which I can easily slide into the set and raise and lower as needed. I added a spotlight to the background behind the Dorito bag and the chips just to add a little bit of more movement and draw your eye into the center of the frame. For the final composite, I needed to capture three photos. One with just the objects floating so that I got nice lights at the bottom of the bag and the corners of the triangle. And then two, one with the surface added with just the key light on so there was only one shadow on the surface. The third plate would be the background with the spotlight on its own, which I could use to eliminate the shadows cast by the wires that are supporting all the objects. Here's the final image after I cleaned it up in Photoshop. It's by far my favorite background option out of the versions that we explored. I also really like how all the elements and the lighting came together in the end. Hope you found this exploration enjoyable, and thanks for watching. Thank you.